Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're joining us from, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Stefan from Business Review, and I'll be your host. It is our pleasure to have Teiko Antenna with us today. Today's guest speakers are Jeff Kunkel, Global Business Development at Teiko Antenna, and John Barton, Business Development Manager at Europe. Before we begin, I'd like to welcome you to our webinar platform on 24. You notice that this webinar is browser-based, so if you disconnect for any reason, please just click on the link you received via email to rejoin the session. In order to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top left-hand corner of your screen and click Submit. We will allocate some time at the end of today's session to address any questions or thoughts that you may have. Please use the yellow Help widget if you require any assistance, and keep in mind you can move, resize, and maximize any of the windows in front of you to get a better view of the slides. But now, please allow me to welcome Jeff. Thank you, Stefan. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to those joining us around the world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Kunkel. I'm in charge of global business development for Taco Antenna, a division of Wade Antenna Incorporated. Again, we know your schedules are busy. Uh, we look forward to showcasing our main product lines to you today, which would be our VHF UHF ground-to-air dipole antennas, our UHF SATCOM antennas, as well as our counter-drone antenna. Uh, just a little background on myself. I've been with Taco Antenna for the last 16 years, and I'm based out of Pennsylvania in the United States. And I uh, look after the United States marketplace for business, uh, as well as uh, many other areas around the world. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, John Barton, for his introduction. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, I'd like to give you a brief summary on my responsibilities and background. Uh, for those who haven't met me from customer visits or exhibitions, um, my name is John Barton. I'm based in the UK. I'm the business development manager responsible for Taco Wade Antennas for the EU markets, as well as uh, looking after Turkey as well. I've looked after Taco Wade uh, business activities within the EU regions for approximately the last eight years. Um, I've been selling communication ancillaries, uh, primarily around Europe, uh, some parts of the world, including Taco products for just over 25 years. Um, prior to that, working within the sales and business development environment, I served 12 years with the British Army and the Royal Corps of Signals as a communications operator. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, John. All right, I'd like to start off with just a brief history. Uh, Taco Antenna has been located in Brantford, Ontario since 2006, and we operate out of a 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility. In 2001, we were acquired by our parent company, Wade Antenna, and we moved from Simcoe, Ontario uh, to Brantford in 2006. Uh, just a little bit of uh, question and answer here on our name, uh, Taco Antenna. We get a lot of uh, interesting comments on that, or Taco, as many people call us, or Taco Antenna. Uh, the name Taco Antenna originates uh, from the name Technical Appliance Corporation. So uh, that's the origination of the name from back in 1934. And just a little bit of trivia for you, because as you can imagine with our unique name, we do get a lot of uh, questions and comments. Again, Brantford, Ontario is uh, located about an hour southwest of Toronto. And the picture on the left there, you will see of our headquarters and factory. Uh, that is where all of our manufacturing takes place. Uh, as well as our management team, engineering team, uh, and uh, QA, everything that takes place in that building you see there on the left. How are you, doing, John? Thanks, Jeff. Um, production manufacturing, um, like Jeff mentioned, all of the Taco and Wave products are manufactured, and this is all carried out over in Brantford, Canada. Uh, the manufacturing facilities covers a, a single floor area of approximately 50,000 square feet. Most of our manufacturing disciplines are carried out on site uh, with production set up 
really to be flexible and accommodate most of the needs of the business, whether that's orders for commercial weighed tower products, as you can see on the right hand side of the slide there, or defence orders for military um, UHF man pack SATCOM antennas, uh, which you can see an array of them there on the left hand side, or indeed any of the series 2000, 5000 uh, VU antennas that we're uh, renowned for. We have approximately 30 to 40 employees working for the company. Uh, these numbers vary and can be subject to production activities within the factory at the time. And with most manufacturing organisations, we have the usual uh, sales, engineering, production, uh, drawing office combined with engineering group, uh, admin and QA departments. As a company, we like to pride ourselves in reacting to most of our customer requirements within a reasonable time frame um, for RFQs, evaluating customer tailored solutions. Any new product or modification would be reviewed by sales or the engineering group at the time of the inquiry uh, to see if we want to carry out that work or it meets the product portfolio or market strategies of the company. Just to give you an idea, delivery timeframes for most of our products are generally six to eight weeks or 60 days from receipt of order. Uh, procurement and production uh, tries to ensure that we have a continuous buffer stock of main key sub-assemblies uh, on the shelf, such as ray domes or tower sections that need to be fabricated and kitted out for a lot of the tower business for the weighed uh, activity side. Uh, on that side, it tends to be more demanding and very quick and reactive, where customers really need a quicker response and turnaround times from order to supply. Over to you, Jeff. Thank you, John. So now I'd like to begin talking about our VHF, UHF, ground-to-air, dipole, monopole antennas, uh, primarily our D2000 series I will start with. The word monopole, uh, that is a trademark name for Takeo. Uh, meaning for that is a multiple dipole. Uh, we have the ability to combine up to four VHF or UHF radios into a single antenna structure with the D2000 series antenna line. We supply these typically to uh, customers such as military, uh, civil aviation. Uh, we also have shipboard applications and we'll be extensively going through these throughout the presentation. So starting off again, the multipole line, uh, the main bread and butter of Takeo is again, four radios transmitting or receiving simultaneously at the same time within one antenna structure. So we have single antennas, doubles, triples, and quads. Uh, obviously where this is a benefit is you're reducing the number of towers, or portable towers, structures at your facility. Uh, anytime you can use less antennas on your site, uh, that is usually a significant improvement for both the end user uh, and you know the, the infrastructure. Uh, these are typically uh, military standard antennas. Uh, we've been selling these for over 30 years, this particular line, and we have tens of thousands of these units sold. They're extremely lightweight and easy to install. One of the most common questions we do get asked is if we're combining those frequencies into one antenna, aren't we going to have cross truck and interference issues? And the simple answer is no. Uh, while I can't get into the internal makeup and design of the antenna, we do maintain a minimum of 30 dB of isolation between each element, which allows for you then to not have any issues with cross talk and interference. These are extremely easy to mount. Uh, you'll see the picture on the right there of uh, almost a figure eight clamp on the bottom. There's two handlebars and those simply just clamp down onto your pipe or mast. Uh, we do not supply the pipe or the mast, uh, but you would need our standard size would be a 3.0 inch OD or 7.62 centimeters. However, you see the clamping blocks there in the middle, the two black blocks, uh, those can be swapped out, uh, especially at the time of order we recommend and we do have two other sizes that would be available to you. We have a 2.875 inch OD 
Again, that's outside diameter. We always talk in OD or outside diameter to keep it simple. Um, so 2.875 is another option, which would be 7.30 centimeters. And we also have a 2.5 inch OD, which would be 6.35 centimeters. So all of those options are available. Uh, however, if you do not specify, uh, you would get the standard 3.0 inch, 7.62 centimeters when the product is delivered to you. So an, an ideal application, certainly for our antennas, would be mobile towers. Uh, the picture there that's on the right, uh, they are, there's eight antennas on that particular mobile tower, and they are running, I believe, 24 different VHF and UHF radios to that simple structure there. If they were not using TACO, uh, obviously they would have to rent or buy another structure or facility, and that can be obviously extremely costly. So, uh, and it's all about saving space, time, and money at your facility. Uh, not to mention the fact your maintenance costs are gonna be significantly lower as you have fewer antennas. I mean, imagine your end user gets the product and uh, instead of getting 20 different uh, UHF or VHF antennas, say instead of 20, maybe we send them seven. Uh, so they'll be much happier, you'll be much happier, and you certainly have uh, less issues with communication gear because uh, you're gonna have less antennas on your structure. One of our very popular antennas that we sell is our model D2211. This is a 100 megahertz 108 megahertz to 174, and 225 to 400 megahertz on the UHF side. Uh, this, however, has a single connector on the bottom, and the reason is we have a diplexer built into this model. This is the only antenna in our portfolio currently that has a diplexer, so that allows you to switch between the VHF and the UHF depending on what the radio is running. So this uh, works well and is compatible uh, with the new uh, General Dynamics URC 300 radios, as well as the PRC 117 radios. Here's just some popular models that we sell. Uh, what you see here is a combination of some dual VHFs, uh, a VHF UHF, a dual U, a triple U, a triple V, and again, a quad U. So again, just to be clear, if you were to buy a D2221, you would be receiving four connectors on the bottom of that antenna, and you would connect four radios to that single structure. Uh, the picture on the right has the two connectors that you see there. Uh, that would be something like the D2213 with a VHF and a UHF connector. This is just the sampling of some of our popular models. However, under the D2000 series, we offer 23 different model combinations. So uh, again, pretty much no matter whether you have a V or a U need, uh, we'd be able to configure that for you. Uh, majority of these products are, are in the 116 to 150 megahertz band uh, or 225 to 400 on the UHF. We do, however, have some slight variations on those frequencies, but those would be the common airband frequencies that these particular antennas operate in. A specialty application that we can offer you is a sectional antenna. Uh, so some of our antennas can be longer, especially the VHF and the UHF combination, triple and quad antennas. So they could be 12 feet tall uh, or three to four meters. And what we do is we are able to sectionalize or two piece that antenna. As you can imagine, this will help if you're trying to go up a tight stairwell at an air traffic control tower. Maybe you'd have to rent a crane or a machinery to get the antenna up to the top of the rooftop because you can't get up the stairwell. Well, with a two-piece version, uh, that would very likely be possible and alleviate that concern. Uh, could also be great for certainly transport, whether it be on a vehicular, a trailer, uh, maybe you have storage case limitations, all of those things would play into this particular application and uh, also freight as we deal with many companies and countries around the world. Uh, certainly your freight costs could be less if you are uh, putting this into a two-piece or sectional version. And a final note on some of the D2000, we do have some different gain levels. Uh, also another common question. Most of these are a 2.0 dBi of gain. Uh, however, we do have some models that go to four and a half, uh, five and a half, 
six and a half. So if you have a specific application where you're trying to reach a extremely long distance, uh, we do offer some higher gain versions as well, and we'd be happy to provide those to you. Over to you, John. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, moving on, ladies and gents, to the Series 5000, uh, which is a popular uh, antenna range within the portfolio. Uh, Series 5000 are primarily used supporting the commercial uh, civil aviation market. Following a similar sort of concept to the Series 5000 in its multipole or stacked dipole, uh, we have single ray dome or single dipole uh, variants available, uh, VHF, UHF versions, high gain up to 4 dBi, uh, peak gain of 4 dBi, and as many as three element dipole combinations, such as a treble UHF or a UVU. Um, there's not as many options as available as the Series 2000. Jeff mentioned earlier there was something like 23 models available. Uh, we probably have about a third of that in the Series 5000. Electrical characteristics are that similar to the Series 2000 in by offering a minimum of 30 dB isolation between the ports. Uh, v VSWR is typically less than 1.5 to 1 and power ratings for each of the ports are VHF 350 watts continuous and UHF 250 watts continuous. Certain models are also available uh, where we offered an integrated LED obstruction light and lightning finial. So there are some models with two and three stacked elements where height is an issue on some applications. So if you check out the data sheets on the site, there are a few models available with the LED light. Key fundamental differences between the 5000 and 2000 series is the method, the way they're mounted. So it's really a, a mechanical mounting difference. As you can see on the right hand side of this slide, we have an inline clamp on the series 5000. Uh, color finish uh, generally for the civil aviation market is standard white. With our inline clamping, the bulkhead connectors are really protected from any external elements of weather environment. Uh, it mounts directly onto a support pole, which you see just under the antenna there, which is not supplied as part of the antenna. Uh, this would mount, and Jeff touched on it earlier, on a 1.66 or a 2.875 inch, or in metric, uh, 42 millimeters or a 73 millimeter outer diameter support pole. When they're mounted, uh, they're secured tightly by six M10 securing bolts onto the support pole. And the fixing bolts and fixtures are all supplied as part of the antenna. Moving on to our shipboard series, we have two series, 7,000 and 2,000. Uh, these are designed for naval defense applications. The series 7000, as we show here on this slide, we have two models and is the largest of the antennas that we do within the variations that we offer. Picture on the right-hand side there is the base flange of the series 7000. This is approximately 12 inches or 300 millimeters, just to give you an idea of scale. Uh, color finishes generally in black. Uh, we're seeing a, grow, a growing in popularity for the Series 7000, also for ground land applications. As it's the largest one we do, we offer six UHF stack, so that's six radios to one structure, or we have a three VHF and a three UHF variant. Uh, the VHF is 108 to 175 megs and the standard 225 to 400 meg band. Uh, both models are supplied with a standard lightning finial. To give you some idea of the size and weight, the, the treble V, treble U model is approximately five and a half meters high in length. Uh, the six UHF model is just over six meters and both models weigh in about 80 pounds or about 40 kilograms in weight. Here we have a picture 
of the 7000 series uh, mounted on the US Coast Guard vessels, which was a development project that we participated in some years ago to design a multi-stack dipole um, request for the US Coast Guard on the Cutter class fleet of ships. As the Ray Dome's design is extremely robust and tolerant to extreme loading, we can use the larger aperture of this Ray Dome uh, to house many of the existing combinations or configurations of the dipoles that we offer uh, within the 7000 Ray Dome. Uh, we are generally seeing more of our customers looking for antenna solutions to operate in extremely uh, harsh environments where you have a combination of wind and ice loading in remote locations, uh, which can tend to uh, get the antenna, antennas damaged uh, on the mountains by the change of the wind and snapping the antennas. Therefore, if you should have any need that looks like it's outside of our existing scope of product that we offer, uh, we would be interested to hear from you. If it's something that we haven't done before, then it requires a new development. Uh, we could discuss NRE charges that may apply and the decision to carry out any development will be subject to the usual factors such as uh, pricing, potential volume, uh, whether the product fits within our product range portfolio or strategy. Uh, lastly, on the shipboard, we have our 2000 series shipboard antennas. Uh, here we have a quick overview of our core products. We have a, a UVU, three connector, UU, three UHFs, and four UHFs. Again, available in various configurations from single dipoles up to the four UHF. Uh, we also do a dual V and a dual U in one single radome housing. Electrical characteristics, also the same as the Land Series 2000. Uh, if you have a particular RAL tint color code, which is really applicable to our U EU customers, and the paint is locally available, then we can accommodate most of the color requirements with a nominal uh, fee, which is applicable to minimum order quantities of the paint. Over to you, Jeff. Thank you, John. So in summary of the lines that we're offering so far, again, the question is simple. Which would you rather have? Uh, a structure like the one on the left with all the potential for communication issues with all the gear on top of that tower or the tower on the right, which is what we could offer you. Uh, again, significantly less maintenance costs, uh, necessary cable runs all over the place. Uh, those are the main features of what the multiple dipole take antenna line is. Uh, just saving space, time, and money. Another application that's quite unique uh, that was end user generated was a need for an Arctic antenna. Uh, this particular model is 118 to 137 megahertz on the VHF side. It is black. It has a uh, special ray dome that has an isophobic paint on it that can reduce the ice buildup on the antenna by approximately 18%. Uh, you will also see that this is similar to the D5000 series where it sits directly onto the pipe with a mast. So there'll be no additional need for weatherproofing the connectors, et cetera. Uh, we've had excellent success with this product in places such as Alaska, Iceland, just to name a few. Uh, currently we offer the VHF model uh, however, if you have a need for a UHF design or other applications, certainly uh, send us your RFQ on that, and we'll be happy to take a look at that and try to meet your need for an Arctic-type antenna. Over to you, John. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Um, moving on to another key part of our business, which is UHF SATCOM, uh, take on antenna offers a series of UHF military SATCOM antenna, and we have eight different models with various polarizations, uh, the key one being right-hand circular polarization, but we do have certain options for left-hand uh, polarity as well. The key operating bands offered in the UHF bands are the standard 225 to 400, 
240 to 320 and the extended band of 300 to 520 megs. Uh, models are offered in various gains from 11 to 15 dBi. Antennas can be used as a semi-transportable sort of tactical uh, product. Various ancillaries are available, uh, such as tripods, counterbalance systems because of the length of the antenna. As you can see on the right-hand side there, that picture, we have a counterbalance weighted system uh, hanging off the back end as it's mounted on the tripod. Uh, also, we can offer electrical pan and tilt positioners for remote locations or where you have a number of UHF SATCOM links uh, networked together. The antennas are robust in design. Uh, they are used extensively for fixed ground UHF uh, ground station installs. Here we have an example of a site that uh, our partner in UK, uh, Systema Europe Limited, uh, commissioned using the Takeo helical in the final design. Mounts are available for either a fixed bearing or network links um, using the pan and tilt motorized positioners. Here we have another example of a site. Um, on the left hand side, we have the fixed bracketry, the, the AM1, AM1 mount, which is supplied with the antenna as an option if required. On the right hand side, we have a site where we have the pan and tilt positioners. Staying within the UHF military antennas, we also offer a man portable version, which is the model SAT MP320. The antenna is one complete single assembly, folds down and packs away into its own carry bag uh, for easy transportation, and it weighs in just over at three kilos. It's supplied along with two low loss cable assemblies and securing pins for securing the tripod legs into the ground in high winds. Uh, the antenna also can be weighted down by using its own carrier bag filled with sand or rocks uh, from the local area that it's installed. The antenna is extremely high in uh, gain performance. Uh, the Manpack antenna comes in at peak gain of 11 dBi and covers the whole 240 to 400 meg band. Uh, the unit is extremely small and compact. Uh, after a couple of deployments, somebody fairly competent can deploy the antenna in less than 30 seconds. This design is made up of three core assemblies, the reflector, which you can see just on the back side of, of the picture on the right there, uh, the antenna mast helical, the main central radiating structure, and finally the tripod supporting the whole assembly. All sub-assemblies can be broken down and easily replaced or repaired in the field uh, by use of a single Allen key, which is supplied in the toolkit with the kit. Over to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, now I'd like to talk about our counter drone antenna. This particular unit is a 2.4, 5.8 gigahertz circularly polarized antenna. This is ideal for counter drone applications as it transmits the energy into one direction. And using a circular pole design is a significant improvement over a linear polarized antenna as you will get a consistently much stronger directional signal, uh, which would be ideal, obviously, for counter drone applications. You see the picture there on the right with the red caps. We're using the same concept as we do with the other series antennas that we've talked about so far, but we're taking those two frequencies, but combining them into the one antenna structure. This would be... Uh, Excellent application for handheld units. As you see pictured here, our antennas are being used in the various systems around the world. Uh, and we supply the antenna. We work with various system integrators that supply these systems for the counter drone. Uh, they can do multiple things depending on the system. It could potentially move the rogue drone, uh, you know, 100 feet out of uh, harm's way, for instance. It could direct the drone to go back to its base, or if safe, it could bring the drone directly down to the ground. Uh, obviously, counter drone is an extremely hot topic right now. 
Uh, anybody with a couple hundred dollars can go buy a drone these days, and that is creating a rogue drone situation all around the world. Uh, people are very familiar typically with things such as the London uh, Gatwick Airport and the airport in Dubai in the UAE. Uh, both of those had to close for a short duration due to a rogue drone in the flight line. And as you can imagine, uh, that kind of interruption cost those airports millions upon millions of dollars. Uh, there's also been incidents over military checkpoints, uh, stadiums, all of these types of applications is where a counter drone uh, will come in as the primary application. This is a handheld version we're showing here. However, this could certainly be used for a tripod application as well as, as others. And uh, if you have a need for this, we're also in development on a couple of other models. Again, currently we have a 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz model. However, we are looking at the L1 and L2 bands, as well as uh, the 400 to 933 megahertz. And we do currently have some products under development in those bands as well to enhance our counter drone antenna line offerings. So uh, again, please contact us if you have a need for any kind of a counter drone application, and we'd be more than happy to speak with you on that hot topic. Now, at the beginning of the presentation, you heard me mention uh, Taco Antenna is a division of Wade Antenna Incorporated. Uh, Wade Antenna specializes in things such as towers and mounting equipment. Uh, the towers that you see there pictured on the left, they have uh, self-supporting bracketed towers, uh, guide towers, various options. Uh, these typically are available in eight foot sections and they go up to a 64 foot height uh, and then there's a four foot mast on top. So it would be 68 feet total would be the maximum that we would offer on our tower applications. And then if you do not need that length, uh, we would have from essentially the eight inches or eight feet down from 64 going on down to other sizes. So again, these are uh, excellent. Uh, traditionally, these are used in uh, applications such as a Royal ISP. So. That would be the most common application for this type of a tower. However, uh, it has a host of applications you could certainly use these on. We also have various uh, mounting options. Uh, we have non-penetrating roof mounts. If you have a building or a structure where you're not able to, uh, you, or you don't want to penetrate the roof, uh, you'll see the picture there with some cinder blocks on it. Uh, that is a non-penetrating roof mount. We also have some tripods, some wall mounts, uh, pipe mass, telescopic mass. Anytime you have a need to uh, put something off of the side of a building or again, a rooftop, uh, we do have a wide variety of mounting options available to you. Wade Antenna also has a line of CATV antennas. Uh, these particular antennas uh, come in various configurations. We have a four foot uh, dish, we have dual dishes, we have helical designs. So there are many areas around the world where CATV or, of course, cable TV uh, antennas are still very much in need. And uh, Wade Antenna is pleased to offer a variety of these products that can be certainly used for commercial applications uh, and industrial master antenna installations as well. So these are uh, heavy-duty antennas. And if you have a cable TV antenna need, uh, Wade Antenna has a product that can very likely address your concerns with that. So in summary of what we've talked about so far, the D2000 series line, we have 23 different models to choose from with various VHF and UHF configurations. These can be used for land, naval, tri-service types of applications. Uh, these antennas do normally come in an olive drab cover, uh, color and or green. Uh, we do have a couple antennas that are white in that series, but the majority of them would be an olive drab color. So again, regardless of the combination you're looking for, if you need three H UHFs, we've got the antenna for you. If you need a single VHF, we have the antenna. If you need a quad UHF, we have the antenna. So uh, please, uh, certainly our website is, is continually posted in the bottom right, uh, takeoantenna.com, and you'll be able to uh, download and see all these spec sheets in their entirety. Uh, 
the D2000 M2G models. These are the ones John was uh, referring to as a shipboard application. We have six models to choose from in this line, and they use a double clamp. So on the bottom of the antenna, there is, uh, instead of just a single clamp, there is a double clamp. Uh, just adds a little bit more stability for shipboard applications with the uh, pitch roll and vibration that you experience on a ship. The D2000 sectional series uh, that I highlighted, we have five different models to choose from. Again, transport, uh, freight costs, uh, tight spaces, all of those types of applications is where you would ideally find a need for a sectional antenna. And we have five different models that you can choose from in that line. The D5000 series, there were eight models that we offer for primarily, uh, we have civil aviation, where you want to mount directly on the pipe or the mast. Uh, but again, these can be used by a host of end users and customers. So if you do not want to have to deal with weatherproofing the connectors or prefer to have it sit directly on the pipe, the D5000 series would be the model of choosing. The D7000 series, we have two models to choose from. Again, this offers up to six connectors on the bottom into one, instruction, one, one structure. So we have a six output UHF, and we have a 3V, 3U configuration. And currently in use by the US Coast Guard, as well as other navies uh, around, the, around the world. The D8000 series, we have one model currently for the Arctic. Uh, again, it's a VHF model, uh, but uh, if you have another need or application for any kind of an Arctic antenna, where you wanna reduce the ice buildup on the antennas, uh, please get in touch with us. For UHF SATCOM, fixed version, we have eight models. Portable version, we have one model. These are both MUOS compatible. Uh, obviously, the, the new satellites that have been released over the last X number of years for MUOS, uh, we have various models that would be compatible with those antennas. They are also compatible with legacy systems. So we can utilize our UHF SATCOM for either system. And we do have the ability to do a right-hand circular polarization. And we do have some models on the fixed version that do do a left-hand. Counter drone, we currently have the one model. Again, it's a 2.4, 5.8 gigahertz antenna. Uh, ideal for that type of a counter drone application, handheld, tripod. Anytime you're trying to get a rogue drone out of your area, uh, we would be happy to work with you, supply the antennas. Uh, if you're a system integrator, we would be happy to work with you and deal with your help you with the system and supplying the antenna for that. We are currently in development again on several other models. Again, 400 to 933 megahertz, as well as some L1 and L2 bands as we enhance that line further. Uh, weight antenna, again, they deal in towers, uh, mounts, uh, Wi-Fi antennas, uh, cable TV antennas. Uh, some of the Wi-Fi product offerings that weight antenna, we've had great success in mines. So if you have a mining application, uh, elevator shafts, we have products for that, 2.4, 5.8. Again, they're circularly polarized, the directional antennas. So we have had uh, excellent success around the world in mines supplying that antenna, where it's very tough to get comms down in the mine shafts and tunnels, and uh, we have the antenna that can likely alleviate your concern there. Over to John. Thanks, Jeff. Um, just before uh, we, we sum up um, the presentation and hand us all back to the host to go through the Q&As, um, as you can see, just from looking at a few of the names on here, uh, Takeo Wade, supply a number of companies and organizations worldwide uh, directly with MOD authorities, um, OEMs, companies that offer value-added services. So we would like to increase this customer base and uh, work with you. Before I hand you back over to Jeff, uh, I'd just like to thank everybody that's taken the time to join us and sign up today, um, especially our European customers. And also, I'd like to personally thank um, the Canadian Trade Service officers that have assisted in setting up some of the uh, contacts to join us here today. Uh, hopefully, subject to the COVID situation that we're unfortunately living in at the moment, 
Uh, we hope to see you at this year's up and coming events towards the end of the year, where we'll be at DSEI in London in September, hopefully, and at the conference centre, uh, the ATM Madrid show uh, exhibition in October in Spain. Uh, we welcome any questions you may have shortly at the end of this presentation before Jeff wraps up. And uh, we'll try and get through as many questions and answers as soon as we can before we run out of time. If we don't, we'll get back to you either via email um, and contact you another medium. OK, thank you, ladies and gents. Back over to Jeff. Thank you very much, John. Uh, one other important point to highlight for Takeo is our warranty. We are proud to offer a three-year warranty on all fixed antennas. So uh, no one year. We offer a three-year warranty right out of the gate. Uh, that begins from uh, time of invoice and uh, we'll cover you know, all kinds of issues and defects and et cetera that uh, if you have any issues for within three years, those would be covered. Um, we can offer this warranty because we get so few issues, concerns, returns. Uh, we're very comfortable to offer the three-year warranty and proud to do so. You just see some of the testimonials from some customers there uh, regarding the Takeo antennas. We have been in business again 87 years and going strong. And finally, some of the contact information. You'll see there my email address, phone number, as well as John's information. Uh, we also have the website. Again, all of our contact information you can find there as well. And I just want to thank you all for taking, again, time out of your busy schedules to attend our webinar. Uh, we know it's, I uh, hope you found it enjoyable and got some more insight into the Takeo Antenna and Wade Antenna brand products. Uh, we are now be having some question and answer, and we'd be happy to, again, answer questions that you may have. So please send them through. And I'll turn it back over to our host, uh, Stefan. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, Jeff. It is now time for the Q&A session. You can send your questions by the Q&A widget located at the top right-hand corner of your screen. Just type it into the box and click Submit. But it looks like we have some questions coming in already. Our first question for today is, what's the typical weight of your antennas? Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, I will take this. The uh, typical weight of our antennas can certainly vary depending on which line of antennas you're referring to. Uh, the D2000, uh, D5000 series antennas that we have, uh, they can you know, be several pounds uh, in weight and they can go up to, uh, again, all the way up for heavy duty shipboard up to about 80, uh, 80 pounds uh, or about 40, uh, 40 kilograms. So, but traditionally, most of our models are between four to 30 pounds or between four, two to 14 kilograms. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much for that answer. Our next question for today is, what is the typical delivery time for your products? Thank you, Stefan. Um, Normal lead time, I think I mentioned in the uh, presentation earlier, but typically we like to turn products around in 60 days. Um, there's a lot of occasions, uh, depending on manufacturing activities at the time, if we have a production run of a similar product or radome size, uh, you may be surprised and get them in four or five weeks. But typically, six to eight weeks is the normal. Uh, an absolute worst case scenario would typically be something like 12 weeks um, if there's a larger production run or a large, long lead time. But like I mentioned earlier, we generally like to have a buffer stock of the long lead items, subassemblies such as radomes. Thank you very much Thank for you, that Stephen. answer. Thank you. And our oh. next question for today is, will you order bigger quantity of double segment ATC antenna soon? What is our advantage to our order in Great Britain? Uh, thank you, Stefan. I'll take that. Um, I saw that question earlier, and the way we're set up at the moment is that I'm looking after the European market. Uh, I'm based in the UK. Um, there is no advantage other than 
you have a local point of contact, somebody in a similar time zone. Uh, I can carry out customer visits. We drop ship anyway, straight from the uh, Canadian factory uh, out to our European customers. So, and there's no advantage in pricing whatsoever. Everybody gets the same price. So, uh, all we would say is deal through the UK office. Thank you. Thank Stephen. you very much for that answer, John. Uh, and just a quick reminder to the audience: you can still submit your questions via the Q and A widget. But moving on to the next question for today. What are the wind ratings for your antenna products? All right, thank you for that question. Um, you know, again, on our website, we will have the individual spec sheets, and these do typically list the wind ratings uh, depending on the model and the product. Um, if you're asking in general on our, say, D2000 uh, or D5000 series antennas, our ground air VHF, UHF, uh, they are typically 100. Uh, to about 150 miles per hour, uh, depending on the antenna. So uh, we have uh, extremely high wind ratings on the majority of our products, uh, and we're, we are proud to offer that. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about typically with our antennas, uh, these are able to withstand pretty severe weather conditions. And we've had many customers that have called us after storms have gone through to say that, uh, you know, the antennas had no issues or problems. Or if they do call, uh, typically the issue is something might have flown into the antenna and actually hit the antenna. Uh, that's a more common issue that we experience. So debris flying through the air, uh, the antenna was still up, but it just got hit by debris. But uh, this, the quick answer is about 100 to 150 miles per hour, but that does depend on the models. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much for that answer. Our next question for today is, what type of connectors does your antennas use? Uh, thanks, Stefan. Um, I would say probably 99% of our products use a standard N-type female bulkhead connector. Um, the only one I can think of off the top of my head um, that uses a different antenna would probably be, be the counter drone antenna or some of the um, not, not Wi-Fi, but yeah, counter drone antenna would probably be an SMA, but all of the ground to air antennas are N-type female. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you very much for that answer. And just a quick reminder to the audience, you can still send your questions via the Q&A widget. But moving on to the next question, can TACO engineer customer specific solutions? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the quick answer is yes. Uh, we would, of course, carry out a business review, um, a specific case for that requirement, uh, look at engineering resources at the time of the interest, uh, volumes, time frames, uh, if there's any NRE costs. But yes, we are uh, uh, definitely open to specific solutions. And if you have a requirement or you have a need uh, and are unable to uh, uh, you know, we're, ha we're unable to fulfill that. We are happy to take a look at it for you. Uh, and all of those various factors would, you know, the, the more information you can come with at the time of your request, certainly the better, so that we can uh, properly evaluate to see if we can uh, accommodate you. But absolutely, we do engineer solutions all the time for people. A couple examples during the presentation was the Arctic antenna. Uh, that was uh, specifically designed. And also uh, the, the two-piece version. Uh, that was also specific. Uh, the 7000 series was originally designed for the US Coast Guard. So those are all instances, uh, counter drones, another one, where we have a customer need uh, and we are looking at providing that unique solution for them. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. Our next question for today is, when does the warranty period start on your three-year manufacturer's cover? Thanks, Stefan. Uh, warranty period usually starts at the time of invoice or shipment of the goods. Uh, then the clock's ticking for a standard three-year manufacturer's warranty. Thank you. Thank you very much for that answer. And the next question we have for today is, can you provide products with custom paint specifications? Can we provide custom specifications? Uh, yes, I mean, similar to the uh, uh, 
the previous answer, we're, we are always open to engineering and designing an antenna for your need. Uh, so yes, please uh, present those opportunities to us. Uh, you know, frequency, details, uh, time frame, and then we'll certainly review that uh, with our management team and engineering to determine uh, whether we can meet and uh, address your requirement. Thank you very much for that answer. And our next question for today reads, are you able to provide export information such as commodity codes and export restriction details at time of coalition? Quotation, excuse me. Thanks, Steph. Yep, thank you, Stefan. Um, again, simple answer is yes. Uh, we have a standard commodity code for the antenna series, and uh, we can also provide you with export uh, details with regards to restrictions. That's, that's fine. And that's at quotation stage. Thank you very much for that thank answer. You. And the next question for today reads, what is the MTBF for your multiple products? Okay, so MTBF or mean time between failure. Uh, typically we are at about a minimum of 100,000 hours or about 11 to 12 years. So that would be, uh, uh, you know, again, our, our Takeo multiple antennas are definitely built to last. And we have many antennas that are, you know, been out there 15, 20 years. Uh, but uh, the average MTBF is typically about 11 to 12 years. Obviously there are a host of factors that can increase or decrease that number, uh, location, you know, by uh, oceans, et cetera, uh, hostile weather. All of those things will certainly play in, but uh, rest assured, if you buy a Takeo antenna, you're going to get a long-lasting antenna. Perfect. Thank you very much for that answer. And again, just a quick, quick reminder for the audience, you can still submit your questions via the Q&A widget. But moving on to the next question for today, what distance do you guys recommend to install the VHF, UHF antennas from each other? Thank you, Stefan. Um, as a rule of thumb for single dipoles, VHF, UHF, um, again, we don't generally get involved in systems design engineering with regards to uh, installations, but as, as a general antenna rule of thumb will be three or four meters between single dipoles. Um, there's a lot of factors to consider the structures uh, other co-sighted antennas, power, all the usual sort of systems engineering uh, queries that should be considered at the time of design. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you very much, John. And I'm afraid that's all the time we have left for today. If you didn't get your questions answered today, keep in mind they can be answered at a later date. So that just leads me to thank Jeff Kunkel and John Barton for what's a great presentation and to Teiko Antenna for sponsoring this session. To the attendees, you receive an email shortly telling you how to access the on-demand version of this yeah. webinar. We can do this on our website, which is www.business-review-webinars.com. Thank you once again, and I hope you have a great day.